You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Subscribe to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. We're picking right back up on Lee's path. So guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while I you. Let's jump right in. Alarm 10, you are up and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> How did what go? The day, with your outfit. I bet you had all the guys swooning. Lee looks, <laughs> Lee looks, Lee looks down like he'd completely forgotten what he was, what he's been wearing. I expected him to sigh or facepalm, but he just tilts his head like he's considering what she's saying. It definitely caused a reaction. I bet. Hey, Wallace, what happened? I bet you were drooling, right? Charlie? Come on, let me hear. Uh, well... You don't have to answer her. Yes, you do. I won't stop until you do. I'm not sure how to respond to the question, but the image of Lee leaning against the railing on the wharf is still burned into my brain, and I can't deny that thinking about it has my stomach twisting itself into knots. Before I know it, my face is burning up and peeking through my fur. Wow, was it that? It was that bad? Best Ashley, bet Ashley was happy. That's enough of that. Lee looks officially done with this topic, and I can see the insides of his ears are turning a deeper shade of red. At least we're the same in that regard. Go relax on the couch. You've had a long day. I whip the two of you some food and we can relax. No more sports tonight, Charlie, okay? Fine, there's nothing good on now anyway. She changes the soccer game to a music channel that looks to be playing the top songs. I'm not up to date with pop music, but I think I've heard this in the grocery store when I visit. Charlie looks to have lost a total interest in the TV and is now just leaning on the top of my arm, trying to get a better view of the two of us. I don't hear Lee approaching until his hand is pressed against my back, just barely above the top of my pants. I give a little jolt, but nowhere near as bad as the one caused by his sister's outburst. Turning towards him, I can see he's looking down at me with a gentle smile on his face, and it's nearly enough to make my heart melt. Charlie, get out of those clothes and have a shower. The oven's going. So something should be in the time should be in by the time you get out. Ah, uh, fine. You're such you're such a mom. She doesn't look too upset about it though. She's grinning like a little demon as she stares at the two of us, and I can't imagine what's going through her head. I'm not giving much time much chance to think about it as she zips across the room into the bathroom. I don't understand how she has this much energy after an entire day. She forgot the fresh act. She forgot a fresh set of clothes. What am I gonna do with her? <laughs> She won't open it if I try to get her to, so just expect her to come out in a towel. She's got no shame. He gives a shake of his head, not even bothering to hide his smile, before, the, before he puts pressure on my back, guiding me further into his living room until we reach the closest sofa. You'll be sleeping here tonight. We'd offer you my bed, but we only have the one and it's hers. I'll be sleeping on the other one. You sleep on a couch? It's a really comfy couch. Lee. I knew the place wasn't very big, but I didn't think it was that small. I thought that maybe the other door led to multiple bedrooms or maybe two beds in the same room. I don't think it would be anything like this. I have a spare bed in my room. If you want, you can come stay there. And who would take care of Charlie? It's a simple question, one that I should have asked, my, should have asked myself as well, but it's a strong argument. One that I don't have an answer for. It's okay, kid. I'm fine here. You don't have to worry about me. That's my job. He pulls me into a sideways hug. It's comfortable until my fingers brush up against the fur of his back. Reminding me just how revealed he is. He must have noticed too because his body stiffens for just a moment on contact. I go to pull away, but he reaches his free hand back to grab my wrist, pressing my hand back to back to and further against his hip until his fur is between my fingers. It's shockingly intimate, and my mouth feels instantly dry. But Lee doesn't say anything either, and he uncharacteristically avoids meeting my eyes and looks to be actively hiding the inside of his ears. Despite how hard my heart thumps is despite how hard my heart is thumping in my chest, loud enough to block out the sound of the television and distant shower, the fur is so soft that it makes me want to dig my fingers in more. I rake my fingers through his fur, closer to the bottom of his back. Eventually, the tips of my claws graze against the base of his tail, and he lets out a groan and arches his back. The motion and sound are such a shock to both of us that we pull away instantly. This is the first time I've seen the possum visibly flush, and his breathing sounds light. Sorry, don't, don't worry about that. The base of my tail is just sensitive. Y yeah. The two of us stand next to the couch, neither wanting to bring any attention to what just happened between the two of us. I'm just lucky the blood rushed to my face and not somewhere else. You relax and get some rest. I'll fetch you a blanket and check on the oven. Normally I'd protest, but right now I just want to bury my face into the soft cushion, soft cushion arm and forget that uh, that ever happened. That, that ever happened. I can't imagine how embarrassing must feel right now. So I do exactly that, and it's just as squishy as it looks. The television screen gave the impression of a sickly green color, but on closer inspection, the sofa looks to be a grayish light blue. It's very pleasant on the eyes. I didn't notice Lee left until he's placing a blanket over my shoulders. It feels made of wool and hand-knitted. 
There's a musty scent attached to it that gives it a nostalgic aura. It reminds me of home. You okay there? You're looking out of it. Mmm, it's just nice. Where did you get this? I want one. I hear a low chuckle behind me before the edge of the sofa next to my legs sinks as he sits down. His tail snakes its way on the top of my legs, the weight giving it away. He lays a hand on my back and slowly rubs in circles, digging his palm in with enough pressure to manage to massage my shoulder blades. A moan breaks through my defenses before I'm prepared for it. It's way better than I expected. Would you believe me if I said my father made it? Really? After everything that Lee implies about his father, I assumed he wouldn't have kept anything from the guy. Hmm. Yeah. Charlie doesn't believe me when I tell her either. I would have assumed it was from your mom. You're always talking about her and with such high regard. She thinks that too. Always says that I'm misremembering, but I remember it like it was yesterday. But what happened? He hesitates and a frown forms on his face. Whatever this topic is, it's clear he doesn't want to talk about it, and if I know anything about him, he's not going to. Before an awkward silence falls over the two of us, a door flies open behind us, thumping against the, the top with a loud thwack. The sound causes me to jump, but nowhere near as much as Lee, who all but shoots off the couch and turns. His fists are clenched, and there's a fierce glow in his eyes like he's ready to fight. It quickly fades as Charlie leaves the bathroom and just... <laughs> showing no sense of shame at walking around her house with barely anything covering her. She looks more confused at Lee's reaction than anything else, which causes my attention to return to the older possum. There's a sheepish uncertainty in the way he looks between us that he doesn't show often. His body is already relaxing, but he still looks tenser than he did moments ago. Did something happen? You two looked like you just saw Lee's high school pictures. The snicker she gives is enough to shatter the growing tension in the room and cause the two of us to look dumbfounded. What are in those photos? I try to look at Lee, but he's already chasing after her, to which she squeals and bolts into the other door. And the sound of a lock clinking, clicking into place follows before Lee can get it to open. Ha! You'll have to come out eventually. We'll see about that. With the roll of my eyes, he walks over to the kitchen and checks on the food, leaving me reeling over the last couple of minutes. The two of them moved on as if nothing happened. Don't worry about that, she's always like this, and I am too. My confusion must have been written all over my face because Lee quickly tries to put many questions I have to rest, but he only succeeds in creating more. Oven's hot, so I'm going to focus on dinner. Charlie should be out soon. She'll want to talk your ear off. She's a, little no she's a little too nosy for her own good. Nosy about me? I'm not very interesting. I don't, don't underestimate yourself. I enjoy your company. He turns away to start opening drawers, and I'm left in the dark about what he's doing. The bench separating us also serves as a wall to hide whatever he's working on, and I don't think he'd appreciate me bothering him in there. I slide back down and roll into my back, properly taking in the environment I'm in. The entire apartment gives a homely feel. If I didn't know any better, I'd think I was just visiting someone after high school. Being left to my own devices gives me time to get a good look at the blanket he gave me. It's a rich red color with a, with a yellow square in the center, but that's it. There are no patterns on it at all. It doesn't take away from the softness and the slight tingly itch it gives to my exposed arms. It's not bad enough to make me want to sleep fully clothed, but it's definitely not a duvet. What are you doing? A high-pitched whisper causes me to tense up, and I'm, but I've been scared enough to to today, today to avoid flinching. It's not enough to stop the giggling right next to my ear as Charlie circles to walk towards the unoccupied chair. Her hair is still damp, but it's not tied up in a ponytail that, it us that I've usually seen her in. Not that I've seen her more than two times at this point. With her bangs hanging down over her head, she looks like a spitting image of how I imagined a younger Lee to look. The family resemblance was always there, but this takes it to another level. A loud bang from the kitchen alongside a grunt of pain steal steals both of our attention as we catch Lee cursing under his breath. It's hard to make out, it's hard to make out, but his scowl makes it clear he hurt himself. Fuck, piece of shit! Don't try so hard, he's not going to find you unattractive. Huh? Lee doesn't reply to either of us, instead opting to just roll his eyes and keep his attention on whatever he's working on. I've never seen him act so... immature. It's a whole new side to him that only Charlie brings out. It's nice seeing him not try so hard to be the, to be the reasonable one. So, what did everyone think? Huh? About the outfit, duh. Surely there had to be some reactions, right? Oh. Oh. Yeah, everyone was pretty shocked. Except for Lucas, actually. He didn't find it too strange and thought we were all overreacting. He always did sound like a weirdo from what Ashley told me. What about Oscar? What did he think? I'm shocked she knows each of us as well as she does. I didn't expect Lee to talk about us so frequently. I know from the last time I met her they talked about me, but that was a very embarrassing train wreck. Before I can reply, my phone buzzes and it catches my attention. After making sure she doesn't look too bothered by it, I give it a check. Speak of the devil, it's Oscar. Hey, I heard you guys walked home together. No fair. Sorry, I was, it wasn't planned. It just kind of happened. It didn't last too long before we split off. I'm trying to ignore the way that Charlie was very unsubtly trying to lean over to see my messages. She's bridging the gap between the two of sofas as she stretches her upper body to lean over on the far arm while her body stays on its own. 
No sweat, man. How things are going at Papa Bear's place? Anything interesting happening? I'm not able to type another word before I gasp next to my ear nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Her entire body has moved onto my couch, and now she's leaning over my shoulder. If it wasn't for the additional weight sinking, down, sinking the furniture down warning me, I might have made a larger reaction. Can we call him? I've never met any of his other friends. I'd love to see them. I don't know if Lee would appreciate calling Oscar his friend, but I don't think it's the time to be pedantic. Wait a minute. See them? Like, a video call? Duh! Who does who just does regular calls these days? Other than my dusting away brother, I swear he's an old man. Right, totally. I don't think I've ever done a voice call before. To be fair, I've never really had anyone do a, to do a voice call with. I don't even think my parents' phones can even do video. It's not long after I sent Oscar the text asking that, asking that he tries to call, much to Charlie and me's collected embarrassment when my phone rings loudly, catching Lee's attention. The raised eyebrow he gives to the two of us quickly dissolves into a squint of suspicion at her sheepish grin. He doesn't pay me any mind as he rounds the around the corner and around the corner towards us, counter towards us. What are you doing? Hey, is that Papa Bear? Let me see him. Is he still wearing that hot outfit? Charlie takes the phone from my hand and points it in the older possum's direction, momentarily stunning him. I don't think he was expecting a call from Oscar, let alone one where they can see each other. The whistle that Otter gives certainly doesn't help with the death glare he's giving his sister. I'm just glad none of this is directed at me, though a smile creeps onto my face at hearing Oscar's energy. Even if he's a bit much sometimes, I can't deny that he really knows how to bring a, to bring a room's energy up. I can already tell he's going to get on get on great with Charlie, and that's not going to end well with Lee. Still rocking that thing? <laughs> what it does seem you tossed that off as soon as you got home. Does that mean you're into wearing that kind of thing? Will, you, will we get to see it some more soon? It's subtle, but his ears turn a slightly darker shade of pink. I get the feeling Lee doesn't get compliments too often, especially with how aggressive and threatening he tries to portray himself. He makes no effort to cover up, though, and his eyes flick over to mine like he's trying to gauge my reaction. It reminds me of our time at the wharf, which feels like it happened weeks ago, instead of just a hour, a few, instead of just a few hours. Charlie takes pity on him and turns the phone back to herself. The smile she's wearing looks like that of a supervillain whose master plan all worked out in the end. What, 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 what was that plan? I have no idea. It took ages to convince him to do so. I think trying to impress Wallace helped. <coughs> oh, goodness. Ow. Yep, allergies. There we go. Okay. I'm not trying to convince anyone. I know I shouldn't have listened to you. Pressing a thumb and a finger against his eyelids, his flesh is getting worse. I've never seen him get this bad before. He looks truly bashful and embarrassed. Heh, <laughs> he looks good in it, though. That's what I said. Fuck this. It was barely whispered under his breath as he turned to walk away, but he storms into Charlie's room and leaves the two of them laughing. Is he going to be okay? Yeah, he's just being a stick in the- oh. That's a little mistake. Yeah, he's just being a stick in the mud. He likes the compliments, but he won't admit it. He's always trying to be a tough guy. If you want to check in on him, you can. There's something about the way she's grinning and the glint in her eyes that warns me that this is more than likely a trap, but I can't imagine how. Charlie returns to chatting to Oscar as I slide off the sofa, their conversation shifting to Oscar's time in the gym. I get the feeling Lee is going to have to deal with a lot more calls to the Otter in the future. If it wasn't for the fact that he had told me earlier, I would have never assumed this led to Charlie's room. None of the doors have any indication of where they go, which is normal, I suppose. It's just, having one bedroom between the two of them feels a little sad, especially since it sounds like Lee just sleep on the couch every night. There's a part of my brain that tells me I should knock, but this isn't even his room. It's, he's likely just going, go, going in here to get away from his sister's taunting. It probably shouldn't take too long getting in. I have a feeling Charlie wouldn't be above yelling something out as soon as a crack in the door appears. The plan to... Hmm, that's a strong gust of wind outside. With the plan decided, I rush through the door and quickly and quickly close it behind me before anyone anyone can notice, nearly smashing it right into my toe in the process. Look at that noise. Oh. Not TV in the other room. It's really loud. Okay. It's only after I turn and see Lee staring at me and his partially undressed form holds up his shirt in his hand that I realize that what the trap was. Is everything okay? I'm not sure what's worse, his complete nonchalant response or his complete indifference to how exposed he is. I mean, sure, he's only revealing his chest and arms compared to before, but it's, it's the principle. Yeah, I was just, just seeing if you were okay. Y you looked upset. He smirks and throws the pink crop top into a basket in the corner of the room. It's nearly filled to the brim with a rainbow of colors. I recognize multiple red shirts that look very familiar to the ones he usually wears under his leather jacket. Kid, did she put you up to this? Up to what? 
checking up on me. She was probably hoping I'd be wearing less, but I'm just changing my shirt. I thought you were upset. You seemed a little embarrassed. The familiar gentleness returns to his eyes, and he reaches over to run his claws through his hair, completely messing up my fur again. I've lost count on how many times I've had to fix it over the last week. She just knows how to rile me up. I'm fine. She always used to do this back when I was in high school. She's a lot better at it now, or maybe it's been too long since I put that on. There's something in the tone of his voice that I'm not able to recognize, but it sounds almost nostalgic. I don't know how, I don't know much about Lee's past, but he's usually so tight-lipped about it, but from the fragments he's let spill, it didn't sound like a pleasant time. I hope she hasn't been too much of a pain. She's not too bad, just really excitable. It reminds me of Oscar, actually. At the mention of Oscar, he sighs and sits on the bed. In the center of the room. I haven't really had time to take everything in the in the room, take everything in, but the room is a lot more quaint than I was expecting. There are no posters on the wall, and the furniture in the room is pretty bare as well. There's only a single-sized bed, one set of drawers, and a hamper full of clothes, and a built-in wardrobe that came with the apartment. The only signs of life are the collection of trophies sitting on top of the drawers. Most of them are for soccer, but there is one for a football, and it looks like baseball as well. I'm guessing these are all Charlie. She's even more athletic than I thought. Than I thought. She's the, she's the gifted one in the family. Good for her. She works hard for it. Lee's followed my eyes and is staring at the trophies. The amount of pride oozing off of him is infectious and I can't stop smiling. Is any of them for you? No, I never had time for any of that. I was too busy working or wasting my time away. Doing what? He pauses and meets my eyes. He looks unsure whether that's about if I, he should tell me or how to word it. I don't know, but either way, it looks ominous. I was a bit of a rebel, everything my dad would hate. Smoked, slept around, stayed out late, went to clubs. You saw the kind of stuff I wore. It doesn't sound like you at all. I had to grow up. I had Charlie to take care of. God fucking knows that bastard wasn't going to do it. His eyes flick to the basket of clothes, to the princess riding on that little pink shirt. A low chuckle sneaks out and I have to raise my eyebrows at him. Some habits die hard, though. Did you really wear that in high school? Not to school, unless I thought I could get away with it. I told you, I went to a lot of clubs back then. For being honest, that's one of the more tamer outfits I wore. I do miss some of them, but I can't see myself in some of the more intense stuff. Well, I am curious. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to get the intense stuff out of my mind if I ever saw it. It's probably best not to pry into that one. Distant laughter catches both of our attention, and it's clear that Oscar's conversation with Charlie is going swimmingly. Much to this may of Lee's rolling eyes. I was hoping I could keep the two of them apart. He's already a menace on her own. His influence is going to make things worse. They get along well, and they share a lot of interests. I don't know how into a sports Oscar is, but he looks very athletic. They can connect on that. I know that. Doesn't mean I have to approve. With the mood thoroughly ruined, he pushes off the bed and walks over to the open oh, walks over to open the middle drawer, revealing two stacks of shirts. One of them has a red shirt that's pretty similar to what he usually wears, while the other is the same some bright, colorful mess that stands out in comparison. It doesn't feel like something Charlie would wear. So I'm guessing that's one of his other outfits from when he was younger. Why is your stuff in Charlie's room? Where else do you think I would put it? I expect him to put it on, to put it on, but he just grabs a pair of trousers from the drawer and under and puts them in a folded pile at the foot of the bed. I'm not sure. I, I guess it makes sense that if this is the only other room, I'm not used to this. I'm used to this kid. My father used to raid my room a lot, so I kept my more raunchy clothes in Charlie's room. He left her alone for the most part. He stretches up and his exposed muscles tense in a way that catches my eye and forces me to look up to try and avoid gawking at his defined body. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!